You're listening to Midlife SideQuest, the -the over-the-hill gaming podcast. Here's your host, John Wall. It's March 28th, 2024, and welcome to another episode of Midlife SideQuest, the -the over-the-hill video game podcast. My name is John Wall, and every Thursday morning I bring you the latest video game impressions, industry news, and tales of a Gen X geek, delivered to you in just 15 minutes. To make sure you never miss an episode, you can subscribe to the show on all major platforms, including Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube. And it would be wonderful if you left a review while you're there to help spread the word about the show. Also, you can look for Midlife SideQuest on Threads if you'd like to chat with me about today's episode or what games you've been playing lately. I am happy that you have tuned in today because on this episode, I'm going to be talking about Sandland. But first, I am sending out this week's positive vibes to Ellery Woods Parker. You can find Ellery streaming over at twitch.tv slash Ellery Woods Parker the third. Uh, That's Ellery, E-L-L-E-R-Y. They play everything from Halo Infinite to Diablo to Hawked. And if you want to hang out with a really cool person, go give them a follow. And the best part is, at the end of this year, they will be donating $1 for each follower that they have to the Trans Youth Equality Foundation, uh, up to 150 bucks. So that's a win-win. Watch some games while supporting a rad streamer and help donate to a great cause. On March 1st, we lost an absolute icon in the world of manga, anime, and video games. It's hard to fathom the cultural impact that Akira Toriyama had on the world. Uh, As an artist, he was responsible for the character design for things like Dragon Ball Z, Chrono Trigger, Dragon Quest, Tobal Number 1... And a game that I talked about uh, on the show just a couple of months ago, Blue Dragon. When he passed away this month at the age of 68, he was still hard at work on lots of different projects, including both a video game and an animated adaptation of his 2000 manga, manga, (laughs) Sandland. Um, Well, last week, we got the debut of the show on Hulu, as well as the demo of the game, which will be arriving on April 24th. So I decided to check them both out. Starting with the show, it was actually released last year in Japan as a full-length film, but for the Western release, they decided to break it up into six chapters. Um, Plus, there's a bonus seventh episode as part of this release, which wasn't part of that original film. It tells the story of Sheriff Rao, a lawman who is trying to keep order in a desert world where water is a rare and precious commodity, with lakes and rivers having dried up years ago. Meanwhile, the king of Sandland hoards his own personal water supply, leaving the people to fight over what little bit of water they have access to. Uh, On the outskirts of town live the demons, uh, beings cast out by the rest of society who only go near humans when they need to steal water for their own survival. Rao, tired of seeing the people suffer under the greedy king's rule, teams up with one of those demons, uh, Beelzebub, the prince of fiends, to search for a mythical spring that will provide water to the people once again. The pair, along with another demon named Thief, embark on a road trip adventure to find the spring and face off against bandits and the king's own royal army along the way. So that's the setup. Um, I don't, I don't consider myself really much of an anime guy anymore. I watched a lot of it in the '90s. You know, things like Akira, Vampire Hunter D. And Oh My Goddess. Um, And I've watched a few things 
more recently with my son who's really into it, like Bungo Stray Dogs and Demon Slayer. But it's definitely like not in my wheelhouse. But I gotta say that I thought Sandland was pretty fantastic. The animation quality is great, first of all. It's got bright and colorful visuals that just pop off the screen. It is really, really great. And I found the characters to be really interesting and likable. Beezlebub is a feisty young demon who wants everyone to believe that he's this evil menace, but he's really kind of a sweetheart. Um, Rao, as the grizzled old veteran, becomes like a father figure to him. Uh, and he's got a really interesting backstory. And the supporting cast is all great as well. Sandland is a really fun story with great animation and characters that I quickly became very fond of. Uh, Toriyama has created a wonderful world that I hope lives on for a long time. I've read that there are actually 13 planned episodes for the first season, I think, but I'm not sure when we can expect the remaining episodes to air. I couldn't find that information. Whenever it is, uh, I'll be waiting. I'll be watching. I highly recommend it, and I think I'll actually probably try and rewatch it uh, with my kids this time because I think they're going to really dig it if they can get over the fact that there's no uh, English dubbed version. So then I checked out the demo for the game, which is coming next month from Bandai Namco. And I know it's just a demo, but I got to be honest, I really wasn't very impressed with it. Um, they throw you into the world, uh, the open world map without really any setup. So I don't know if this is a uh, retelling of the anime or if it's an original story that takes place, you know, after that. And, you know, they let you run around either on foot or in three of the available vehicles to try out the combat. And the combat's not bad. I, I had a little bit of fun with it. It's just kind of simple, I think. You know, you've got the tank, which is what they use in the show, and it's probably the best all-around vehicle. And then there's also a motorcycle, which is quicker, uh, but packs less of a punch, and a mech that you can jump into, which you can use for slower but strong melee attacks. The variety is neat, uh, but the combat just doesn't have that wow factor, you know? Nothing just I don't know. The world feels kind of empty and boring, which, you know, makes sense because it's it's a desert world, but there just didn't seem to be a whole lot going on or much to do. I did come across one dungeon, but it wasn't any more complicated than, you know, go through this hallway, kill the enemies along the way, open the chest at the end. That's it. Uh... It almost feels like a game that you would have played like 15 years ago, like like an early PS2 action game. Maybe, you know, maybe with the context of the story and some mission objectives in the full game, there'll be more fun to be had. But the demo doesn't do a great job of showing me that or convincing me that I should go shell out 70 bucks to find out. I mean, it is a free demo, though, so if you've been interested in checking it out, I say go for it. I mean, the only thing you'll be wasting is time, but for sure, watch the anime on Hulu. That is a recommendation that I can wholeheartedly get behind. This Sunday is the International Transgender Day of Visibility. So first and foremost, I want to say to the transgender community that I see you, I love you, and I will continue to do what I can, however I can, to keep fighting for you and to see that you are treated with the love and the respect that you deserve. Um, I am so proud to have a transgender son, one who actually just recently started hormone treatment as well, which has been amazing. Uh, in addition to just being an awesome kid, an amazing kid, uh, he's been an inspiration and shown me what 
true strength is. And he's opened my eyes to issues and to a community that I wasn't very educated on at all. And I am very, very grateful for that. And in recognition of that day, I've been asking for your help in raising money for One Heartland, which puts on summer camps for LGBTQ plus kids, as well as kids with uh, housing instability and kids living with HIV and AIDS. And I am very, very happy and excited to say that you guys raised $505 for them. I can't even begin to tell you how happy that makes me and how much it will help One Heartland. I actually had set the goal when I started it at $200, not having any idea what kind of um, success I would have. But you guys blew it out of the water. Thank you so very, very much. Also, the wonderful folks at Turtle Beach offered up a great prize package to give to one person who donated. Uh, it includes a Stealth Ultra Controller and a Stealth Pro headset. And I'm excited to share that the winner of that Turtle Beach prize, in a pretty funny coincidence, is Ellery Parker. So, thank you so much for your support. You know, you got positive vibes and prizes. Thank you uh, for your support and watch your email because I'll be sending off a message with um, more details. So thank you to everybody who donated and to Turtle Beach and to One Heartland for all that they do. Last week's question for polling at threads was, what is the best card game of 2024? Is it Queen's Blood from Final Fantasy VII Rebirth or Bellatro? or something else. Uh, with 57% of the vote, you chose Bellatro, which I agree with. Uh, as much as I love Queen's Blood, which is great, uh, that that took in 29% of the vote. And 14% picked Other, with my good friend Birdo throwing his support behind Uno. Which at first I was going to say goes against the spirit of what the poll was going for, but then I realized that there's probably a good chance that Ubisoft has a new Uno video game out this year. So I'll allow it. Thanks, Birdo. Uh, this week's question is, what is your favorite character design work by Akira Toriyama? And the choices are Dragon Ball Z, Dragon Quest, Chrono Trigger, or something else. Feel free to write in what other work of his uh, has been your favorite. I'm talking to you, Blue Dragon fans. So go visit Midlife Side Quest on threads after the show to cast your vote, and I will share the results on next week's episode. Thank you so much for listening to Midlife Side Quest. I appreciate you making time in your day for me. You can catch a new episode of the show every Thursday morning wherever you listen to podcasts. And don't forget to subscribe and leave a review while you're there. So until next week, be well and happy gaming. Happy gaming.